This is going to show you mediagrams and surface maps and how to read them. This will help you with this week's lab and uh, current weather studies. So this is a surface map and it has the time listed in the upper left hand corner. Time in the date stamp. That means that's when it was, um, when it's valid for. So this was 18Z. Z is Zulu time. Technically we use UTC which is universal time coordinate. Zulu and UTC is actually different. I, it's not by like a lot. I mean we're talking about like seconds and so it's not a big difference between the two. But there is, so I mean, I need to state that there is a difference. So you, you'll see Z and UTC interchange because of that, because it's such a small difference between the two. But technically, they're not the same. And Zulu has been used, the actual Zulu time has been used in weather maps for, for a really, really long time since we first started weather maps. So, which is why you still see the Z listed there. And it's obviously quicker to write a Z, or type a Z, than it is UTC. So, just a little FYI on that. But converting it to local time is the exact same way. So for the central United States, you know, central time zone, that if you're at UMKC is um, for the standard time, you subtract six from the Z time. And if it's in daylight savings, you're going to subtract five from it. There's a whole other little show you can watch to, you know, help you with that. So 18Z, that means it's the time for this one is noon for the 21st of January 2013. Now over here on the upper right hand portion it says fronts at 15Z. So the last time the fronts were actually analyzed and placed on the map was before the time of all the other observations that are placed on here. So that was 15Z. So it just means that they don't, at every single weather map that's generated, they don't go through and analyze the exact location of the fronts. And a lot of that is the fronts really aren't going to move a lot anyway, so it's not going to really change its positions because we don't have a ton of weather stations in every single state that are official weather stations that you would use for these kind of maps. So that's kind of why they just don't do it. It's probably not going to change very much unless this front is really moving. And then they might go through and make sure that it's as up to date as possible. But generally, it'll be behind. The fronts were last analyzed behind the time of the map. So now H's are high pressure. High pressure generally means pretty good weather because air is sinking, so you're not getting a lot of cloud development unless you're on the outskirts of these these systems, or if you're on well in this case and the one that's in the Midwest you're on the southwest side and there's a little bit of cloud cover and uh, associated with it so and flurries to some light snow and again that's because you're on the, the southwest side of it which is stuff we'll, we'll look at later that there can be that possibility otherwise um, if you look at the one in Canada you see that there's an H and there's generally clear skies around it again the one that's in Idaho same story so if they're strong high pressures, they're going to have sinking air and you're going to have be cloud free and you're going to have, pre have precipitation so close to it. So that's kind of a little FYI on that one. The L's are low pressures, which means you have rising air. Rising air is makes cloud formation and could have precipitation along with it. You're going to have all your fronts off of low pressures, not off of highs. Don't ever draw fronts off of high pressures. It just doesn't happen. It's not possible. So uh, we have a low pressure. You can see that the, the front comes all the way up, swings through towards the Great Lakes and actually hits the, the low pressure. Now this is a pretty big cold front. It's actually a pretty strong cold front as well. It's bringing in some, some pretty chilly air behind it. And it covers a big chunk of the East Coast and through the central part of the United States as well. So it's bringing some colder weather. Now it's going to bring a lot of snows, especially up towards New York where they could get double digit snows. Which is not unusual. I mean, the low pressure is hanging out near the Great Lakes. It's going to get a little bit of lake effect added with it, which means it'll dump a lot more snow just because it's got picked up a lot more moisture and that kind of stuff. And again, all stuff that good stuff we'll, we'll check out later. But the fronts that are in the triangle shape and that are blue, if you have a map that's colored anyways, are cold fronts. The points on them tell you the direction of movement. So since the points are pointed down towards the south, then that's moving that direction. Anywhere you see the half circles, and if again, if it's colored, it's going to be in red. Half circles are going to indicate warm fronts. There really isn't too much to look at on here that's really a warm front, because most of them are alternating. 
half circles and triangles, which means it's stationary. And just like the name says, it's stationary that the front's not moving very much at all. Um, up, up toward the Great Lakes, looks like there's two half circles together, and that's a little bit of a warm front there. But otherwise, on this map, you're seeing mostly stationary fronts throughout the thing, and of course, the, the one cold front. And again, the direction of movement is indicated by which side that circle's on. So this, in this case, the warm air is trying to move up towards the north, um, northwest. But since it's stationary, it means it's really moving. The solid blue lines are isobars, which are lines of constant pressure. And so it's going to tell you, it's going to tell you where all the pressure is equal. So anywhere along that line, the pressure all those areas are going to be equal and then anywhere between one blue line and the other the pressure is going to be somewhere between each one of those equals blue lines so it's a good way just kind of a get a big judge look at it okay so there's a really strong maybe high pressure over here and a really strong low pressure on the other side so it's a real quick guide real easy to see where all the pressure systems are because again low pressures are generally associated with clouds and precipitation high pressures are generally associated with clear skies and, and nicer weather Alright, mediagrams. Going back to the EMS weather website, hit mediagrams. Gonna pick one, we'll just do the one in Arkansas. Mediagrams have the date and the time stamps down on the bottom, and the stamps are always in the in UTC Lulu time. And then you've got four different graphs that go along with it. You got temperature and dew point, you've got wind direction and cloud coverage, you got visibility and miles, and you've got the pressure how the pressure's changed over that period of time. It'll tell you the time that it's valid for, and it gives you the year first, the month, and then the day, and then that's the time, and again, the UTC time, but it's got hours and minutes, so it's straight up 18Z. So that's our, our noon time for the central United States. Um, the red line's the temperature, it'll show the temperature change over that time period. The dew point, it'll show the dew point and how it's matched up. The further these two lines are apart, the drier they air, the closer together they are, it means the more moisture is present. And you'll notice in the overnight and early morning hours, those always will always tend to, unless it's something weather systems coming through, they tend to be close together because the temperature is typically dropping overnight, and so the dew point's not going to change unless there's some kind of system coming through. So just kind of a little FYI on that. And you'll notice your temperature is, unless again some weather system's moving through, your temperature is usually the lowest right before sunrise, unless there's some kind of weather system that changes that, but almost always that's going to be the case. The temperature is going to be the lowest right before sunrise. Um, the next one has a circle, and when it's got nothing in it, it tells you it's clear skies. The more covered it is with the dark, that means the more cloudy it is. Completely covered in, obviously it's overcast. The wind barbs here will tell you the direction, the direction the wind's coming from. And so in this case, almost straight up and down, it's going to tell you it's the north. If it's pointing more this, this way, it would be towards the east, down would be south, and then to the left would be to the west. So it's coming from this direction. So it's coming from the north. A full line tells you it's 10 knots. A half line tells you it's 5 knots. So you'd have to add in, if you had another full line, you'd be 10 plus another one would make it 20 knots. That, that kind of an idea. So it's a nice little quick thing where you can see everything in one quick graph and kind of get an idea of what's happening over a period of time. Now, let's see, going down the visibility, which is done in miles, if there's visibility is great, they don't report anything and there's nothing to report because visibility has been good. Now the pressure will show you, and this is um, the pressure in millibars, and you can see how it's dipped down and then it's starting to rise back up. So that gives you an idea that there was something that passed through, in this case the front had passed through, and then now that it's done and gone through, that high pressure, which is in the Midwest, is moving on, so the pressure is going back up. So just a quick little look at it, and you'd be like, okay, so something had moved through some type of system, now the pressure's on the rise, which means pressure's on the rise, but better weather is, is, on, is on its way. So that's kind of how you look at your mediagrams. There's more information on the current weather studies, too, to help you with it. So if you need any more help than that or this, then definitely uh, shoot me an email and we'll, we'll get it. We'll get you set up with it.